Would you pray with me for a moment? Gracious God, cleanse from us all of the anxieties that prey on us in the moment. Lift us into the presence of your word. Open to our hearts and minds your will and your love. In Christ's name, amen. My great-grandfather, my father's side, was from the old country, from Sweden. Came here in the late 1800s and from all the stories was a stern yet loving patriarch. My grandfather was the same way. They came from time when they settled in this country when life was survival. Luxuries were few. My grandfather was born in a dugout house that was half underground, half sod, with a sod roof in the middle of the Kansas Plains. They expected and received obedience from their family. The old saying about my grandfather was when grandpa would say, jump, you asked how high, once you were already in the air. It wasn't any question. But there was never any doubt about his abiding love for his children. And my father once told me that his dream in life was to be half a good, as good a father as his had been. I grew up always knowing that my father loved us, was always able to talk to him and to be accepted, but I also grew up with my greatest fear in life being that I might disappoint him. I don't know if I ever really made him angry. I never rarely saw him angry, but he would be saddened when my brothers and I were less than we could be. I tell you that because much of my understanding of God and my relationship to God comes from those images of that stern, loving patriarch in the family. And that's fairly normal for all of us, which is why I do understand when I see these passages, when God calls, you answer. You ask how high once you're in the air, or how long once you're in the boat to Nineveh, or leave your fishing boats on the shore. You know, how do most of us respond when we, if we're perceiving that God's calling us? Do we qualify it with well, not today, Lord, I've, I've got time tomorrow. Or do we leave? You know, Mark's image of the disciples when they're called is fairly simple. Jesus comes walking along the shore and says, follow me, and they just get up and walk and leave. I'm sure that they had already seen him, heard of him, heard the sermons. There was already some draw pulling them to him, but the sense is that they left immediately as Mark tells it. Now we know they didn't leave fishing forever because Jesus and the disciples are always back out on the water fishing again. But what happened is that their lives changed at that moment and the center of their lives shifted. See, the real secret when God calls, when we answer, isn't that we ditch everything in our lives that that which is the center of our lives, that which governs who we are, that which guides our thoughts, our principles, our, our very living, changes. And suddenly, we're following God in what we do. We're seeking to be obedient to God in how we live. Now look at Jonah. I love the story of Jonah. It's a great image. We need to really, truly understand this in context because, as we said, this passage we read is the second call of Jonah. The first call came to Jonah, and God told him to go to Nineveh and tell them what he preached. If you do not repent in 40 days, I will overthrow the city. I will send fire and brimstone. Now, Nineveh was... Nineveh was 
was a Sodom and Gomorrah of those days. Nineveh was the enemy. That was the Israelites' people's worst nightmare was Nineveh. And all of the dissolution, all of the problems, all of the sin, all of the corruption of that city, all of the things that made them hate Nineveh, it was also the political enemy, the, the one that they were afraid would invade. If we were to translate it today, it depends upon the generation, it would be the Berlin, it would be the Moscow, it would be the Tehran, it would have been Baghdad 10 years ago. It's all those things that we hate. And Jonah is called to go walk into the middle of that city and call them to repent. Now think about what that would have meant for any of us to have been called to go to those cities that in a given day was our enemy. Do we ever wonder why Jonah got on the boat going the other direction? God has called him to do that which is most dangerous. And frankly, as we see the story, Jonah really doesn't want to go because if God's going to overthrow Nineveh, the last thing Jonah wants to do is interfere with that plan. And he goes back, and as we read the story, he goes in and he prophesies to the people of Nineveh, and they repent. Now, the part we don't read is that once he had preached to the people of Nineveh, he went outside the city, sat down under a tree, and he waited for the fire and brimstone to come. Gleefully waiting. And the people repented, and God didn't send it, and Jonah being the adult, mature person like you and I, pouted. Because you see, the call of God had come to Jonah and to the people of Nineveh, and they had changed and he hadn't. He was obedient to God, just enough to go and prophesy, but not radical enough to have changed who he was. He was not seeing the people of Nineveh with God's eyes of love and forgiveness. He was seeing them with the human eyes of vengeance, hate. What does it mean for us when we accept God's call in our lives? Does it truly change the fundamental person within us? Or do we just respond to do a few things to look good as if we're truly responding? Have our lives changed? Has the center of our lives shifted? Are we suddenly somebody different because we are now God's child, God's person, God's servant? Do we see the world new eyes? Do we see the world through the eyes of love and forgiveness, through God's eyes? You see, that's what God calls us to be. That's what happens when the disciples leave their boats. They didn't give up fishing, but their lives have now changed. When God calls us, when God touches our lives, it isn't just a call to go out and do a chore for the day and go back to the way things always were. are because suddenly we are now God's. We've accepted the call and we now serve God first, last, and always. We may still go fishing in order to be able to feed the family and to eat. But we do that in order that we may continue to serve God. Hear the call. Jesus called the disciples, saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent. Turn your lives around and believe in the good news. And you see, that's the call of the gospel, to repent, to have your lives change and become new again. Hear the words. Hear the call. Accept the call that you may be transformed and your lives may be made new by God's grace. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ.